I'm Rick Foster. Well, if this is your first time to Rick Uncorked, welcome. And if you're returning, thanks very much for supporting me in this channel and returning to watch this segment. Now today, we have a wine that I'm sure everybody's familiar with. They produce over 3 million cases a year. Fetzer Wine. Now Fetzer Winery started by Bernie or Barney Fetzer back in 1968. He had made his money and had retired from the lumber industry. Him and his wife had 11 children and they moved to the Mendocino County. That's about 500 miles north of Los Angeles and just north of Sonoma County. And they started growing grapes. And then in 1968 they decided they would start venturing into winemaking and Barney was good friends with uh, the Kendall Jackson winery. So Mr. Jackson and uh, Fetzer were actually very good friends and they sort of developed winemaking on their own and by, you know, sampling each other's wines and, you know, teaching each other what they would learn. So at that time you didn't have UC Davis teaching people how to make wines. You just, it was kind of trial and error. So. Fetzer now has been making and producing wines for over 50 years. They celebrated their 50th year anniversary, I believe it was in 2018. Now, after the original founder passed away, the heirs sold it to the uh, makers of Jack Daniels whiskey. The Jack Daniels company owned it for a few years, developed it into a much larger commercial operation, and then it sold again to a Chilean company. Now, that company has brought in some European style influences and they've really kind of gotten away from that really traditional commercial, you know, commercialized, you know, mass production wine. And they're starting to venture into a little bit more of a classic European or boutique style winery. However, they're still producing 3 million cases of wine each year. They're sourcing their wines throughout California, and they're claiming that that is one of the successes to their taste, that they're able to get grapes from various growing regions in California, blend them together, taking the best fruit or the best harvest from various growers, and then blending them together. Today, we're gonna taste a uh, Merlot. Now, I wanted to taste this. It's an Eagle Peak Merlot. It's just named Eagle Peak uh, Merlot. And I wanted to give it a taste to see how it um, how it compares to some of the other Merlots. Now, Fetzer is known for, their, they don't really put their wines in any um, oak barreling. If they do, it's for a very limited amount of time. However, unlike some of the other mass-produced wines, they don't add artificial oak flavoring to the wine. Some wineries will put an artificial oak flavoring to give it the essence that it had been um, fermented into in oak barrel when actually it's been strictly stainless steel vats. So I wanted to give this a try and see how it tastes, being that it's probably not been in an oak barrel. If it has, it's been probably less than 10 days without any artificial flavoring. Well, I want to give this a try and I'll let you know what I think. It's a beautiful red ruby color. So it's got a rich, nice, dark color for a Merlot that's actually very dark. Um, seeing some little, you know, light shines through there. It's very nice. Has a jammy smell to it. Now that tastes exactly like I would expect from a traditional Merlot. It's actually, it's, it's got a little bit of tannins in it. Um, I would like for it to be a little smoother. I'm gonna let that air for a minute to see if that oxidizes and brings that tannin level down to a smoother element. But right now I'm tasting strawberries, I'm tasting the, the jams, I'm tasting some berries. So I'm tasting a lot of fruit, a lot of berries. So I'm tasting some blackberries, I'm tasting strawberries, I'm tasting a jammy quality, but I'm hit with some tannins. Um, I don't taste any oak at all. So again, there's, there is no artificial oak flavoring, and I doubt this has ever been in a oak barrel. The tannins actually give me a dryness 
that I'm actually enjoying. So with that Merlot, that could be sweet with all that fruit, there's enough tannin in that to give me a dry wine taste. I'm gonna give this another swirl here and see if those tannins have now opened up or have dissipated, um, smoothed out to equalize in the uh, fruit flavor. It's very minerally. It has a lot of mineral uh, notes in it. It has those tannins still there, giving it me that very dry back end. So that after I swallow in the back of my mouth, I've got a, I'm hit with a very dry tannin um, taste and the front end smelling and then taking that first sip towards the front of my tongue, I'm tasting those berries. A strawberry, a blackberry blend, and it's low in acidic. So the tannins perhaps are bringing that acidic level down. It's not acidic wine, it's a dry, it's a very traditional Merlot um, grape um, taste, which I'm enjoying. Because sometimes some of the Merlots can be very pungent or overpowering or completely watered down to where it tastes just like watered down you know grape juice this actually has a decent merlot flavor to it it's not bad uh, this bottle is sells for under ten dollars a bottle it's a fetzer it's one of the original winemakers of northern california and for producing three million cases of wine a year, I would say they're doing a very good job. They're keeping that um, flavor within the wine, the, the integrity of traditional winemaking. They may not be you know, fermenting in oak barrels, but they're definitely keeping in alignment with the fruit for forward flavors balanced out by the tannins. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this segment and I hope you'll look forward or I hope to see you in our next segment. And we're gonna be discussing some other red wine varietals from the California coast. Well, stay tuned and cheers.